Welcome to Six African Trade Talks, the show that brings you closer to the intra Africa trade business world. I'm your host, Chad Chawanda. In this episode, our guest is Tuti Mwambenja. Tuti is the country director at World Business Angels Forum in Tanzania. Tuti, welcome to Six African Trade Talks. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Chad. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Before we continue, we'd like to hear a word from our sponsors. Would you travel to Cape Town for business or leisure? What if you could combine the two? Well, you can. With Optimum African Experience, Cape Town Leisure Experience, with partners such as University of Cape Town, CEDA, Kadena, Luminary and Prime Focus, experience the best of Africa. Tuti, what is the one thing that nobody knows about you? I can say I'm very passionate and I have a strong resolve in the things that I believe in. I tend to really push them through to the end. I overcome any challenges that come my way in order to achieve those goals or dreams. Thank you very much for sharing. Tuti, please tell us more about yourself, your background. Okay, uh, well, Chad, I'm a travel enthusiast who is passionate about Africa and the power we have to solve our own problems. And from a career standpoint, I'm a businesswoman. Well, having the ability to identify social problems and provide innovative solutions has been an essential part to what I do. The business world has been a strong contributor in shaping me into who I am today. Through my career, I've had uh, businesses that have both succeeded and failed due to funding. I was unable to successfully take the travel agency that I founded to greater heights due to a lack of funding and support. This was uh, very devastating for me because I strongly believe that domestic uh, tourism can have a great impact in the lives of the people and the industry at large. So this failure really triggered the desire to eliminate the possibility of that happening to other businesses in Tanzania, businesses that have the ability to impact their community. So when I was given the opportunity to become the WBAF country director, this was a defining moment for me because I've been given a big platform to advocate for businesses in Tanzania, but also bridge the early stage funding gap. And I'm very confident that I'm able to use the insight and experience as a businesswoman in Tanzania, but also the knowledge that I have gained through my firsthand experience in fundraising and engaging the WBAF global community. I strongly believe that I'm able to contribute to the angel investment and startup community in a meaningful way. Interesting. Tell us a little bit more about WBAF. What is it? How, how does the organization work? And what's your role there? How do you contribute? The World Business Angels Forum, or WBAF in short, is a global organization that aims to promote entrepreneurship, and support startups and SMEs. We provide a platform for entrepreneurs, investors, and mentors to network with our goal of connecting startups or innovators to training, mentorship, and access to a network of qualified angel investors. We also have our own angel investment fund where we provide funding for startups and innovators who are seeking for smart finance. Startups are able to fundraise through what we call the global fundraising stage, which is a platform where qualifying startups are given the opportunity to pitch in front of angel investors and the WBAF Fund Investment Committee. For the first time, the global fundraising stage will be happening in South Africa, which is very exciting for me because it's a unique opportunity for global angel investors to meet with government and other policy makers in Africa in order to exchange ideas on best practice and how they can collaborate to foster the environment for growth of local angel investors, but also attract more global investors into the African continent which I believe can greatly benefit the entrepreneurs in Africa that are struggling to raise funding. 
Oh, that's great. Thank you for sharing. So when is it in South Africa? It's going to be this year in November from the 20th to the 23rd in Durban. Thank you very much for sharing that information. What lessons can you share that can help entrepreneurs in Tanzania that are seeking funding? You've been in that space yourself. The lessons that I can share, I would start with preparation because as a startup myself or someone who's gone through the fundraising experience, preparing to fundraise is very important because many startups come from a startup point of view and they don't know what angel investors are looking for when they are seeking to fund these investees. So taking advantage of training opportunities that are available throughout the angel investment community in Africa where investees are prepared or they are trained to understand what angel investors are looking for, how to negotiate, because I think many startups get stuck at the stage of negotiation because they get surprised by the negotiation language or when they during the due diligence stages, the startups are surprised by the amount of equity that investors want, or some investors want to buy them out. Some of them don't really understand the language, and there hasn't been much support for these startups in terms of going into such meetings with their lawyers who understand international law and how to do international business. So I would say taking advantage of these training opportunities that are offered by the angel community in Africa so that they can prepare and have successful fundraising rounds. You know, you talk about preparation without preparing and having also access to the knowledge of what to prepare. You know, you always do what you like and what you know. So fundraising is quite an interesting space and it requires people that have got the correct knowledge. So, yeah, thank you very much for sharing that. What has been the impact of technology based on your experience, be it for Business Angels Forum or just in Tanzania as you interact with founders and the funding space? To start with WBAF, technology has been a game changer for us. It has um, enabled the organization to reach a wider audience and provide support to businesses or entrepreneurs around the world. WBF has been leveraging social media, digital marketing to promote its events and its initiatives, as well as engage and connect with entrepreneurs, investors, and the WBAF community. Recently, WBAF has launched its own community platform, which has increased frequency of engagement between startups and investors through pre-recorded pitching sessions and virtual one-on-one sessions with investors. It's allowed a more convenient engagement between the startups and angel investors. Uh, Overall, the application of technology has allowed for the angel investment agenda to gain momentum worldwide through the use of technology. In terms of impact of technology on businesses in Tanzania, there's been many positive changes and opportunities emerging. I think the most noteworthy impact on Tanzanian businesses is the rise of new business models and opportunities, such as e-commerce, digital marketplaces, and online payment systems. Overall, businesses should continue to embrace technology solutions so that they can stay competitive, increase efficiency, and productivity, especially in this global village that businesses are existing in. You know, as you were talking, you brought a thought. And one of the things that I wanted to also ask you is across Africa, a lot of money has been going into fintech and has been going into the tech space. Any other areas that you think have got potential in Tanzania? Well, the energy sector, I think, has tremendous potential in Tanzania because currently many parts of the country don't have electricity. And as a nation, we are not attracting significant investment into the country because of the issue of energy. It makes production very expensive 
for manufacturers. So they opt to go to other countries that have had a deeper penetration in energy. So I'm thinking the area of renewable energy, especially the solar energy, hydropower has tremendous ability to create attraction in terms of funding. Certainly, energy is an interesting space across the continent, even in South Africa, where we thought energy issues were sort of okay. Before we continue, we'd like to hear a word from our sponsors. IATF is an initiative that supports the implementation of the AFCFTA. It is organized by Afrexim Bank in collaboration with the African Union, the AFCFTA Secretariat, marking an important step to sustainably address the gap in trade and market information for the successful realization of the AFCFTA objectives. Ms. Kanayo Awani, the Executive Vice President of Intra-African Trade Bank, Afrexim Bank, said a lack of access to trade and market information is one of the key reasons for the low level of intra-African trade. We hope to see you at the next IATF. So Tuti, you spoke about how you love traveling. What experiences can you share based on your travels that you know someone in the international community or in the diaspora benefit from when they're looking at investing in Africa? Well, Chad, I would go back to the issue of fintech. I think I would encourage investors to invest in their financial services, but consumer credit to be exact. Africa is home to a large and a growing middle class and has an increase in internet connectivity, but there's still a lack of access to consumer credit, which I think is holding back the retail and the e-commerce sectors. Most e-commerce operators have identified trust to be the limiting factor for consumer adoption to e-commerce. Consumers tend to want to check the adequacy of their goods on delivery before paying. So having the ability to purchase their goods without paying upfront could create and reduce the buyer's risk. This in return could expand purchasing power and um, increase penetration for e-commerce in Africa. For instance, currently in East Africa, consumer credit is only being offered to government employees and those with formal employment. Increased access to credit facility can increase adoption of e-commerce, but also it will result to people in the low and middle income class, as well as the informal sector, to have a better opportunity to afford items that improve their lifestyle and livelihood. You know, when you talk about consumer credit, I remember in different spaces, I've had people worrying about issues to do with default in payments. But if you look at women in Africa, I don't know in Tanzania, but if you look at South Africa, Zimbabwe, here in Southern Africa, there is what in Zimbabwe they call it a round, where women exchange money every month. And the one month, someone has got the full amount from everyone else. And they have never really had any issues of default in those spaces. It's also there in South Africa. So I think you're very right in terms of consumer credit. It will allow us to be able to grow the economy. Exactly. And here in Tanzania as well, we call them sarcoses. Maybe there isn't defaulting in that space because women tend to be, I don't know, more financially disciplined, but also a lot of the financial well-being sometimes in, in Africa with single mothers is dependent on the woman. So based on the environment that is surrounding them, they tend to really appreciate that opportunity that they've been given to access such financial instruments. What are the three positives? that would make an entrepreneur more likely get funding? And what are the three negatives that would make them fall off the list based on your experience? Based on my experience, the three positives would be, obviously, the ability for their idea or solution to scale. Most investors don't want to invest in maybe restaurants or bakeries. They want to invest in solutions that have the ability to scale, whether it is within the country or globally, having a solution that has the ability to scale, but also a strong team 
many investors, they don't only invest in the product or the idea, they invest in the co-founders and the team that is trying to bring this vision to pass because I think it is the founder or the team that bring the visions to pass. So if, if the teams are coordinated, if they believe in what they are doing, it can be an advantage to them getting funding. The downside would be unrealistic valuations, which a lot of African uh, startups tend to do. They sometimes overvalue their solutions or their companies. So sometimes they get to pitch in front of the investors and based on the idea or the solution they're offering and the money that they're requesting, they tend not to be successful. Lastly would be, again, preparing for the opportunity to meet the investors because you never know where this investor is. So always being prepared because you can get invested during a networking session, during an actual pitching session or a business associate that you have. So always being prepared, knowing your numbers, especially the amount that you're looking for, your cash flow projection can also be a disadvantage if you're not prepared to do so. Thank you very much for sharing. Judging from your experience, I know we touched on uh, energy, we touched on fintech. Tanzania is also mining, it's also tourism. What do you think is attractive for future investments in Tanzania? We've got the Africa continental free trade area and a lot of people are looking at it. A lot of investors, a lot of founders are looking at now expanding into different African countries. How do you see opportunities for future in Tanzania? In terms of the agreement, I would say it's still relatively early to tell where exactly the funding opportunities are because the agreement has been interrupted by the pandemic, so we've not had enough time to measure. But I think that the angel investment community, both regional and international, is optimistic that this agreement will foster a better investment environment in Africa and reduce the cluster of investment in specific African regions. But I think, for example, international investors have found success in the automotive industry by partnering with African countries, signaling that the automotive industry is ripe for new and increased investments. But also the trade agreement has potential to bring about growth in agriculture and agro-processing sector as well, which will drive new international and regional investors into the sector. But only time will tell what areas investors will be keen on actually investing and whether the agreement will actually streamline investment throughout the continent, reducing the cluster of investment going to certain parts of Africa. Certainly, only time would tell. Looking at the angel investor space in Tanzania, what would you say is a number based on your experience on average of angel investors? Well, to be honest, the angel investor ecosystem in Tanzania is still at its infancy. For instance, WBAF is amongst the first players into the region and there hasn't been channels where the angel investment community has been researched, has been identified. So there is a lot of potential into the area of angel investing in Tanzania, but in terms of numbers, there are no specific numbers because it's still a very new approach to investment in Tanzania. A lot of startups here are used to venture capitals and the angel investors are only just starting to get into Tanzania. So The greatest mandate, I think, of WBAF is to create a more defined angel investment community. We are also looking into launching the first angel investment club here in Tanzania that is going to just be focused on Tanzanian investors. Only time will tell in terms of the numbers that we'll get, but it's still very early to tell on the angel investment space here in Tanzania. I also think that there have been quite a number of angel investors in different African countries. But it's like when entrepreneurs started, people used to call themselves 
businessmen or different things they would call themselves but later on when the world opened up people started changing and started calling themselves entrepreneurs how do entrepreneurs and founders get funding at the moment because i would assume that they would only go to venture capitalists when they reach a certain scale so when they are starting how difficult is it to access funding in tanzania and where where does someone go that's exactly my point for Tanzania that has been the major challenge of startups and founders most of them have been incubated and accelerated but after that they really didn't have anywhere to go so that's why WBAF saw that there was a great demand in the funding gap and that's why they started the WBAF Tanzania office but also most founders here in Tanzania are dependent on grants to grow their ventures before they reach venture capital so they've been heavily dependent on grants They're looking for sponsors and applying for grants from different UN organizations only recently has the need for angel investments been identified and a lot of startups are also talking about wanting to access uh, angel investors in Tanzania so it's mostly grants and i think maybe uh, financial institutions getting micro loans and things like that interesting thank you very much for sharing and we keep learning what's happening in different african markets any podcast or book you'd like to recommend I enjoy reading so this uh, is a very difficult question for me but I would recommend two books currently The Automatic Millionaire by David Buck which is a step by step approach on how to build wealth by using small payments and automated transactions without having a strong financial discipline and also soar by td jakes which is a non traditional guide to starting and running a business those are the two books i would recommend would you travel to cape town for business or nature what if you could combine the two well you can with optimum african experience cape town leisure experience with partners such as the university of cape town Africa is a continent full of potential, but potential means nothing if we don't take action to create value. Let us take action. Thank you for listening to this episode. Don't forget to post and share this episode on your social media platforms. It will help us reach our mission of sharing knowledge about intra-Africa trade and making it available to as many people as possible. Let us grow our continent. We can go far, fast together. If you can please leave a review on our podcast page or on Apple Podcasts.